It's a brand new year in the world's premier powerboat racing series, the UIM F1H20 World Championship, as the tour heads to new venues for the 36th UIM F1H20 season and the world's toughest, bravest, most steely nerved marine motorsport racers lock horns for the world's most prestigious title in powerboat racing. The 2019 season boasts an eight Grand Prix calendar that will be raced in some of the most stunning locations around the world. Round one kicks off in the Middle East with Dammam, Saudi Arabia for the first Grand Prix in the kingdom since 2004 and marking the 280th UIM F1H20 Grand Prix. The tour then enters the European stage as it heads back to Portimao, Portugal for the 18th Grand Prix of Portugal as round two is raced in Algarve for the 17th time. So Then round three is back in the idyllic spa resort of Evian for the 23rd Grand Prix of France to be raced on the shores of Lac Le Mans for a fifth consecutive year. Thank God, thank God, thank God for more medicine. the venue to be announced for round four. The tour then continues with round five in another brand new location, Qingdao, China, the 12th city to host the UIM F1H20 event in the People's Republic, which will mark the 25th Grand Prix of China. then heads back to Amaravati, India, which will host a second consecutive Grand Prix for round six. Another venue to be announced for round seven, the tour will return to its traditional season ender in Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates, where the 2019 season will be decided on the Khalid Lagoon, hosting the 20th Grand Prix of Sharjah. We're set for another spectacular year of competition, racing and drama, not to mention all the celebration, partying, glamour and festivities that goes into a three-day F1H20 event. UIM F1H20 is not just a race, it's a lifestyle as the year takes us around the oh. globe to some of the most stunning locations as tens of thousands watch live or from their channels across the globe to witness the intense spectacle that is F1H20 racing. 
a rundown of the racing format and the outline of a three-day UIM F1H2O Grand Prix. F1H2O Grand Prix is stretched out over three days with official practices spread out over the three days, a qualifying session on day two and the Grand Prix race on the third and final day. The official qualifying is typically a three-tiered session with state-of-the-art timing equipment, recording the performances of each boat to decide the final classification and starting positions. Q1 is a 20-minute session with all boats entitled to run multiple laps at any time during the session with the 12 fastest progressing to Q2. After a 7-minute break, the times will be reset and the remaining 12 boats will then run another 20-minute session. Again, they may complete as many laps as they want at any time during that period. At the end of the session, the six fastest boats will progress into Q3. The times are reset and the top six boats from Q2 go in reverse order dictated by the time set in Q2. Drivers go out one by one with the circuit all to themselves and have two shots at laying their fastest times in a bid for pole position which gives them the inside lane advantage on that crucial opening drag race to the commitment buoy. Once the starting lineups have been determined in the official qualifying, the teams are set for the multiple lap Grand Prix the next day, run over a minimum 35 minutes or a maximum 45 minutes. Any engine changes to the boat from qualifying results in a loss of their starting position for the race. When the weather conditions are unsafe, qualifying can be reduced to two or even just a single session while the usual pontoon start to the race may be replaced by a rolling start in rough conditions. The Grand Prix winner earns a maximum 20 points, runners-up receive 15 points per race, third place 12 points, then 9 for 4th, 7 for 5th, 5 for 6th, 4 for 7th, 3 for 8th, 2 points for 9th, and a point for 10th place. Grand Prix locations are usually held on lakes, rivers, protected bays, or inland waterways. Every race circuit is different in size, but are generally about 2,000 meters in distance. Each circuit has at least one long straightaway and several tight turns, mostly left with one or two right turns. The turns produce a g-force of up to 4.5 on the driver, which means his weight is multiplied 4.5 times as he makes a tight U-turn at over 100 miles per hour. crucial factor to the safety of teams out there on the water during official practice qualifying and racing is the Osprey Rescue Team. Osprey Rescue has over 50 years of experience and has established itself as one of the leading rescue outfits in the world of powerboating. Their services are offered at UK powerboat events and at international F1H2O powerboat races. Before the formation of the rescue team and their introduction of new ways of working, it was usual for an injured driver or crewman to be pulled out of the water over the side of the rescue craft, a painful process that invited worsening the injury from the accident, especially to broken ribs, limbs, or back trauma. He loses the boat on that back straight! Oh no, Jonas Anderson barrel rolls the boat! And the divers there, the Osprey rescue team on the scene, we can see the divers there working frantically, and he's looking fine. The Osprey boat design also... <laughs> incorporates a crane, which again is used to support the cell out of water, thus giving the driver vital extra minutes to ensure no further injury is caused during extraction. 
An advanced onboard medical kit allows Osprey to support ventilation and circulation of a severely injured pilot, while protecting the neck and spine with collars and long board. Over the years, the team has accumulated a vast knowledge and expertise of rescue and has continually developed equipment and new skills. The team was involved in the testing of the safety cell which was developed by Chris Hodges to reduce the injuries during races and also pioneered a self-contained lifting device to ensure the driver and cockpit are clear of the water in the event of an accident to reduce the risk of drowning. Many rescue teams use the Osprey boat design and methods. No rescue is ever quite the same as another and the team has to react quickly, thinking on their feet at every incident. Osprey Rescue has proved a vital and game-changing addition to powerboat racing in general and F1H2O in particular. Now it's time to meet the teams and the drivers who will battle for the UIM F1H2O World Championship in 2019. Nine teams and 18 drivers representing 12 countries line up in 2019 and the cast this season is loaded with champions, pole and Grand Prix winners, podium challengers and an abundance of experience and talent. Of the 18, three are multiple champions and boast nine titles between them. Alex Carella with four, Philip Schiap three, Sammy Celio two, whilst nine of the School of 2019 are Grand Prix winners and amongst 12 who have made it onto the second and third steps of the podium. All eyes will no doubt be on last year's team and driver champions, Team Abu Dhabi. They are the team to beat, having won an astounding six out of seven pole and race wins last year. 2018 world champion, um, no one can ever take that away. Thanks to my team here at the race, thanks to my team at home, and my grandfather also, looking down on us. So thank you for everything. I love you guys, and thank you for all the support of Abu Dhabi. Really, they support us so much. And uh, we test tomorrow morning at 7 for next year. They dominated an extraordinary 2018 season that turned into an inter-team title race with each of its three drivers, Sean Torrente, Daniel Kamzi, and Eric Stark, leading the standings at one point with a title decided at the final round of the year in Sharjah, where the race win went to Stark, the world title to third place Torrente by five points, and Al Kamzi retired, rounding out the year in third. For Torrente, his first ever world title was the result of years of perseverance and hard work. And after eight seasons, 48 Grand Prix, seven wins and 12 podiums, he finally achieved his dream in 2018. In 2019, he'll be driving the number one boat. In achieving his lifelong ambition to lift the UIM F1H to a world title, Torrente joined an illustrious group of eight drivers who won the first race of the season and went on to win the world title that same year including names like Renato Molinari, Roger Jenkins, Bob Spaulding, Jonathan Jones, Fabrizio Bocca, Guido Cappellini, and Philip Schiap. The objective now is to join an even more elite group of just four, Molinari, Cappellini, Carella, and Schiap, who have successfully defended world titles. Team Abu Dhabi will only be racing two boats in 2019, announcing a two-driver lineup, newly crowned world champion Sean Torrente and world number three Pani Al Kamzi, an impressive strike force with the duo notching up seven and eight career Grand Prix wins respectively and amassing 40 podiums collectively. That means the team parts ways with 2018 world number two Eric Stark. In a repeat of last season, Stark once again finds himself looking for a new team, which means he may once again miss round one in Dammam, Saudi Arabia. Following a year of mixed results, CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team ended last season's solid runners-up in the world team standings behind Team Abu Dhabi, and they continue with the same lineup in 2019, with three-time world champion and nine-time Grand Prix winner Philip Schiap leading the charge, hoping to make up for a lackluster 2000. <laughs> 
2018 season by his standards, in which he finished world number five with only two podiums coming in the first two rounds of 2018 and title chances effectively ending with that crash in Amaravati. But Schiap's teammate Peter Marin had an outstanding year as he seeks to build on two fourth place qualifying outings, picking up two podiums and three top five finishes to indicate a possible changing of the guard inside the team as he finished the year in fourth overall in the championship standings and a place ahead of his teammate. For Team Amaravati, who finished on the year-end team standings podium with some great results by Jonas Anderson and Eric Eden, it's business as usual with no change in lineups as the Swedish-based team seeks to build on its strengths in the new season. 2019 will mark five-time Grand Prix winner and 16-time podium placer Jonas Anderson's 14th year in the top flight and will see the driver from Frovi pass the 100 Grand Prix milestone later in the year as he comes off the back of a strong end to 2018, both qualifying and finishing in second in Sharjah. With the resources at their disposal, Anderson and his team are always punching above their weight as they try to better an overall best of third in the world team standings. Eric Eden, who will be entering his second full season this year with Anderson on Team Amaravati, will seek to build on a string of top performances last season, which included two top five qualifying slots and a career best fourth place in the Grand Prix of France in Evian. Eden ending the season with a drive from 15th off the dock to fifth in the final round in Sharjah. Emirates Racing finished the 2018 season in fourth in the team standings as the only female Grand Prix winner in the history of the sport, Marit Stromoy, ended the year ranked sixth as she tries to go for at least her second career Grand Prix win in 2019, hoping to build on a runner-up performance in Amaravati in 2018 as she enters her 13th season on the tour. The Norwegian driver is racing once again alongside Polish driver Bartek Marszalek, who has on occasion shown he has the pace and is capable of qualifying in the top three and challenging the lead runners, but engine issues in recent seasons have hampered his progress. He embarks on his ninth season and goes in search of his first podium finish. Two-time world champion Sami Celio sets out on his bid for a third title with backing from the Emirate of Sharjah after signing a multi-year cooperation agreement with Sharjah International Marine Sports Club and for the eighth year will be partnered by fellow Finnish countryman Philip Roms in the rebranded Sharjah team. The significant backing by SIMSC is a major boost for the Finnish driver who has an impressive CV with 13 wins and a further 34 podiums to his credit, making him the leading point scorer of the current crop of drivers, having topped the 1,000 points mark last season. Good luck, Sami! <laughs> Welcome in my life! Although he and the team have endured a frustrating run and dip in performances and results from mid-season 2017 to 2018, both he and Roms turned it around and found form in the closing stages of last year. Celio grabbing a podium in Abu Dhabi and qualifying in the top three in Sharjah, Roms putting together a three-race run finishing in the points. Roms is still one of the youngest drivers at 25 after being the youngest driver to join the tour and score points at 18 in 2012 in Qatar. And he's the youngest to podium at 21 in 2015 in France. His best ever career showing was 2016 when he picked up his second podium with second place in Evian, France, qualifying in P2 in Harbin in China and finishing the year in sixth overall. Maverick F1 Racing Cedric Deguin starts his third consecutive full term in the championship following his debut in 2004 and two cameo appearances at the Grand Prix of France in 2015, achieving a career best finish there in 2016, finishing fourth. He's joined by fellow Frenchman Béranger Robard, who makes just his second start following a solitary debut outing in France in 2017. Looking to put a tough season... <laughs> Oh. 
behind them and start afresh is no doubt victory team. The legendary Dubai-based team struggled in 2018 as defending 2017 world champion Alex Carella only managed to complete one race while Ahmed Al Hamali failed to get a podium all year. Al Hamali is a determined racer, qualifying on pole 10 times, winning seven times with 12 further podium finishes, and last season battled to five straight points finishes before a big crash in Abu Dhabi in qualifying forced him out of the final two races. Four-time world champion Alex Carella has one of the most impressive records in the championship, having been the youngest driver at 25 to start from pole and win a race, and the youngest at 26 to win the world title. From 58 starts, he has finished on the podium 30 times, winning 15. Led by four-time world champion Scott Gilman, Victory will be looking to achieve the results they look like they deserve on paper. Italy's Francesco Cantando is the most experienced driver on the tour and starts his 24th season and is joined at Blaze Performance by American Greg Foster. The Italian is the second highest point scorer on the tour with 12 Grand Prix victories and 30 podium finishes from his 176 starts and has finished runner-up in the title race on three occasions. Last season, the development of his latest generation Blaze boat showed a marked progress with Cantando delivering a string of strong performances, posting a top four slot in qualifying and two top five finishes and further progress at the same pace could see him challenging for podiums in 2019. His new teammate Foster from Anaheim Hills, California is highly regarded and one of the most experienced racers on the North American circuit, ranking fifth all time with 15 victories from 73 starts, having been competing most recently with Dillard Racing. Portuguese outfit F1 Atlantic are again led by team principal and experienced driver Duarte Benevente and they have a new team member Italian Alberto Comparato. Benevente is a veteran of the tour with 155 Grand Prix behind him and sets out on his 21st season looking to add to his six podiums. It's going to be yet another riveting season, so sit back, buckle up, and enjoy the ride.